Well, hey everybody, Matt Kloskowski here, and I wanna welcome you to the first of two bonus videos for my upcoming Luminosity Masking course in Photoshop. It comes out on October 4th, but I've got a free tutorial for you here. Basically, what the heck are Luminosity Masks? What the heck are they? Why should you care? I think that will get covered inside of this video because they can be pretty powerful. We've got a lot of ways to make selections inside of Photoshop. And I think when you see the ways that you can blend and soften and feather a selection and a selection edge with a luminosity mask, especially for landscape photography, I think you're gonna see some real powerful stuff inside of there. Uh, one quick thing before we dive in is make sure you stop by mattk.com slash luminosity and i'll put the link into the description um, you can sign up for email updates and not only to to get notified when the course comes out because i'll let you know when it comes out on october 4th uh, but most importantly i do my biggest discount when the first the course first comes out and i do a lot of extra little kind of bonus things to help the learning process when the course first comes out as well so you'll be the first to get notified when that happens let's go ahead and dive in so we're here inside of Photoshop and I've got a very simplistic document open, just uh, different degrees of from white to black. And it'll give me a chance to kind of display what's going on with the luminosity mask before we jump into a photo here. So here you can see we got white in the middle, we got black on the side. Well, we're gonna create a luminosity mask, right? And one of the ways that we can do that is uh, we head over to the channels palette and we hold down the command click, the command key on the Mac or the control key on the PC. So what you're gonna do is command or control click on the RGB channel, all right? And that's gonna put a selection out there. It, it's actually, it, the selection just looks like it's a circle, but it actually has a different level of detail in it, okay? Everything is not selected the same as you're gonna see in just a second here. But we're gonna put a selection around this we're going to head back over here to our layers panel and we're going to add a curves adjustment layer. If you don't see the adjustments panel over here, just head over here to the window menu. You can go down there to adjustments. That'll show it. And uh, we're going to add a curves adjustment layer. And when you look at this curves adjustment layer, uh, if you pay attention to the mask that we just created here, and by the way, we can uh, option or alt click on that mask to see it. It's going to look exactly like our photo because we just have different degrees of white to black here. Um, but that's a, that's kind of a tell about that selection. Even though that selection just looked like a circle, it was more than that. That selection had all these different gradations in it. It's just Photoshop can only show you the marching ants. So that's why it just looks like a circle. So what we've done is we've created a selection of the luminance in the photo, all right? We've created a selection of the luminance, the luminosity values in this photo. And we did that by command or control clicking on that RGB channel, okay? And when we get to a photo, you'll see how it actually looks a little bit different. But again, in this case, it looks the same as our image. So we've created a selection of the luminance and now it's up to us to do something with it. So we decided to add a curves adjustment layer. I'm gonna double click back on this adjustment layer. And now that I have a selection of the lumens, what, what do we sometimes wanna do when we get the brighter parts of the photo? Well, we wanna pull back. Sometimes we wanna pull back on our highlights. It's, it's very similar if I go over here into Lightroom or I was inside a camera raw and I go over here to my highlights and, and kind of pull back on that. It's very similar to, to that process here. So I can go to my curve and I can pull down. Right? And you see it's making the bright stuff in the photo darker. Okay, We're pulling back on the bright things on the photo and we're making them darker. Well, what's pretty cool about this is now that we get a selection of our luminance, all we have to do is reverse that selection. And now we have a selection of the opposite, which is going to be our dark stuff in the photo. So an easy way to do this is let's just duplicate this curves layer. Command or Control J. That makes a copy of it. I'm gonna double click on it, it opens up that curves layer, and I can just drag that point off the screen that resets it, so now it's not, now this curves layer is doing absolutely nothing to the photo. But now I can go and I can click and I can move up, upward, and now it's making my luminance brighter, the selection of the luminance brighter. Well, that's not what we wanna do in this case, right? We wanted to reverse this, we wanted to take the luminance selection, which Photoshop gives us a nice easy way to do that in the channels panel. We wanted to take that luminance selection and we wanna reverse it. So now all I have to do is go to this layer mask and just go to image, 
adjustments and go down here to invert. Invert takes what's white and makes it black. It takes what's black and makes it white. So now let's go back over here to my curves adjustment. So now this is very similar. If you look, it's not affecting the inside. It's affecting the outside. Watch. Okay. See, now it's affecting the outside of the photo. So it's kind of like working in the shadows. Again, if we go over here to Lightroom or we were in Adobe Camera Raw or just about any photo editor out there has a shadows adjustment and we're able to go in there and adjust the shadows. Okay. Now, whether you know it's happening or not, when we do highlights and when we do shadows inside of Lightroom or Camera Raw, it actually is building a mask in the background. All right. You don't see it, but if you've ever been into the detail panel, um, and you can do the same thing in Adobe Camera Raw and you've added any sharpening, a little trick we can use is to hold down the Option or Alt key and we can drag this masking slider and we can see that Photoshop or Lightroom is building a mask inside of here and we can get a preview of what that mask does. Now I can move this slider without it and it'll work, but I can get a preview by holding down Option or Alt of what it's doing. Well. The, the shadows and the highlights don't give us that ability to use that keyboard shortcut, but that's exactly what it's doing is it's building a mask and it's, it's just, it's doing it on the fly. Okay. So now we know we can come in here and we've got our highlights that we're working with on this layer where we can make them brighter or darker. And then we've got our shadows where we're working with on this layer and we can make those brighter or darker. All right. So now let's switch over to a photo. Okay, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit more real world here. So we've got a photo and what I want to do is I want to make the sky darker and I've got a lot of foreground area here that I want to make brighter. Well, I can go over here to my channels palette and I can hold down the command or control key and I can click on the RGB channel and it's going to put a selection around the luminance in the photo. And then what I do is I come down here to the bottom of the channels palette and I create a new channel. All right. So I'm just going to click that create new channel button. It's the one that's a, it's basically a, a rectangle with a little dot poked out in the middle of it. I'm going to create a new channel. And then if I click on that channel, I now have, it looks like a black and white rendition of the photo, but it really is a selection of the luminance. The white areas are most selected. The gray areas are kind of selected. The black areas are not selected. Photoshop has another cool feature, which lets us refine this a little bit because maybe, maybe, you know, the white areas are selected, but there's a lot of white and gray areas inside of this. And I don't know that I want to really affect them that way. So I can hold down. It's that it's that humongous keyboard shortcut. It's basically the whole left hand side of the screen, the keyboard. Uh, it's command option shift on the Mac or control alt shift on the PC. And I can click on that, that channel that I created. I can click on it again and that refines my, my selection a little bit more. And then I can create a new channel. Now I have a new luminosity mask, that second one here, that's even further refined. And I can do this again. I can command option, shift, click on this mask. And then I can create another channel. And then I'm just going to go up here and deselect. And as I click through these little channels here, just think of them as selections. Okay. They're masks, they're selection. Don't let the word channel get in the way here because you're, we're really never, ever going to do anything in the channels palette, except load these as a mask. Okay. So you can see there's the first one. There's another one that's more refined. Here's another one that's yet even more refined. Now I think we're getting somewhere. Now you can look what's what, remember what's white is selected what's black is not so what's white whatever's white is going to be affected when we do an adjustment wherever there's black we're not going to see anything happen inside of that area so what's really nice about this i'm going to call out a couple of nice things about the the luminosity mask what's really nice is that number one it does a really great job of showing the spots that i have in my sky and that i needed to clean my sensor number two more importantly is no look at how the sky is gradiated all right. When we darken the sky, I don't always want to darken it at the same rate. You know, sometimes I want to do the brighter areas more and the darker areas a little bit less. Look how, look how it's even gotten part of the reflection down here. So we get a nice smooth blended 
type of a selection here. And that's one of the benefits of a luminosity mask. So here's what we're going to do. We have our mask. We're going to command or control click on this mask. The third one that I created, we're going to command or control click on that. And that's going to put a selection around it. Okay. Remember at its core, a luminosity mask is just a selection of the luminance in the photo. It's all it is. What we do with it then becomes a whole different ball game. But that's all it is. It's just a selection. A mask is a selection. Luminosity is the bright stuff. So we're making a selection of the bright stuff. We're going to click back on RGB. I'm going to go over here to my layers panel. And I'm going to add that same curves adjustment that we did before. And now I can pull back on that. And you can see how we're starting to adjust the sky in a little bit of a different way. And what's nice about that is that it's adjusting the sky a little bit because if you look at our mask, remember it was gray up in the sky, but the peaks, they were almost white. And so we're also pulling down those bright highlights, those really bright spots on those mountain peaks that are in the distance there. So that helps out a lot too. Now I want to kind of compare this to you because another typical way that we would do an adjustment and and here's the big thing with luminosity masks, and I got to get this out, and I want to make sure I get this out in this first video. Do not think this is a be-all, end-all. This is these these are masks. These are techniques that I use when I feel that I need them, and I feel this photo lends itself very well to them because one of the things I would normally do to a photo is I would grab my quick selection tool, and I would go up here and I would just make a quick selection of the sky. All right, and we can do the same thing. We can go to our uh, curves adjustment layer, and I can pull that down. Now, again, sometimes that technique works great. When I tried it on this photo, what I started to notice is it's a very, very harsh selection. I'm gonna command or control plus to zoom in. Uh, and you know what I'm going to do, guys? Hold on a second. I, I got to do it. I'm going to hit the letter J for my spot removal tool. It's just, it's totally bugging me. Um, Let's just go in there and get rid of that. And let's go, where is there? Another, there's another one. I, I, I just, ah, I got to do it. <laughs> okay, back, back to our story. So as I zoom in, I'm going to zoom in on the peak up here. Look at what it's doing. See that harsh line that we have there as I adjust this? Well, let's go ahead. We can see our mask. We can option or alt click on our mask to see it. That's the mask. Now let's option or alt click on the luminosity mask. See the difference? See how, how blended the luminosity mask is versus the mask that I created with my quick selection tool. Again, I'm not saying the quick selection tool is bad. In fact, I live by the quick selection tool in so many different cases. This is one of those times where it would be more work than anything for me to get the quick selection tool to do what this luminosity mask did with really just a few clicks because look at how nice that transition is. And what it translates to in our photo is as I make this adjustment, you can see those harsh lines that start to appear. And if I turn this one off and I turn the other one back on, look at how nice and blended. Now let's see if we can, uh, see if I can move this off to the side for you. Let's you can see how nice and blended that transition automatically is. I didn't really have to do any work to it. It's automatically that way. And I can't, I, no matter what I do, I really can't get it to look like the other one did. Okay. So that's a big benefit there. And, but also hopefully you see it as a lesson in that there, there, there's, these are just different techniques. Okay. These are little, these are things you put into your repertoire of tricks that you dig into depending on the photo and depending on how you're editing that day. And sometimes just depending on your mood. Some days you want to do something quick. Some days you want to spend a little bit more time. So just to kind of complete this, what I'll do is I'll press command or control J on my curves layer that we had before. And that makes a duplicate copy of it. Remember we have our mask. So this one was for the highlights, the bright areas. Now we have another one. So I'm going to go click on that mask image adjustments invert. And then I go over here and I take my curves adjustment layer. And now I can move it the other way. Now I can open up and get some more detail in some of those darker areas. It's just the inverse of what I did before. Once I get a selection 
of the luminance in my photo, I now have a very easy way to flip that and get the exact opposite of it. Um, and then the last thing that I'd say, you know, guys, is, is you know, luminosity masks are a great starting place, but they'll never, ever take away the need for us to go to the mask itself. And I can tell that maybe a little bit too much of this, uh, this little peak over here is getting some of the mask. It's getting blended in there a little bit. So there's nothing stopping me from taking uh, kind of a lower opacity brush and going up here and brushing in some of those areas up there if I kind of feel like it might be bleeding in. And that's an important, that's an important concept to get. Nothing, nothing we do inside of Photoshop is going to be one click works forever and ever and ever perfectly. Uh, it's always good to know that some of these things are a starting place. And then there's times where you're going to have to go in there and you're going to have to modify it a little bit on your own.